Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here and welcome back to my channel and a very exciting video because this video is brought to you through the EA Game Changers program. So big thank you to EA for providing me with early access to the brand new game pack, which is of course Journey to Batu. We found out about this like a week ago now at the Gamescom opening night and now I I've got a chance to play with a hands-on from the comfort of my own bedroom. So this create a sim over look and first look is gonna be a little bit different because usually I pre-record all of this footage. Going in to the aspirations, it's actually strange to see a new category. This kind of scares me in a way because looking at this first off makes me think, oh, this game pack is gonna be it's like its own separate entity in The Sims 4, which makes me nervous because it has its own dedicated aspiration. The bonus trait is prepared voyager. Sims who are prepared voyagers fill up their needs slightly when traveling. Already lets me know that Batu is gonna be a destination world. So under these, we actually have two different sets of aspirations. So we have Hope v Order. On the world of Batu, there is a growing conflict. This sim is out to explore Black Spire Outpost and understand whether they should stand with the Resistance or the First Order. So Resistance, good guys. First Order, bad guys. Let's keep that in mind. And then we have Galactic Privateer. This sim isn't about choosing sides. They're happy just mingling amongst the smugglers and bounty hunters on the fringe planet of Batu. Earning a few extra credits along the way is just a bonus, no matter how they get them. We're gonna start off with the feminine tag stuff as I usually do. So first up, we have this short cropped bob hair style, which is actually the hairstyle that is used for Vi Maradi, who is actually one of the characters on Batu. And then this is a second variant, which actually has the colours in it. I actually like these colour choices. Usually I'm not one. I kind of wish that those two were a bit more different because like red hair and purple I feel like they could have made those different. Wow, all the red ones have purple in them. Whereas the blondes have different colors. That's a strange choice to me, I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, that one's really cool as well. I like this hairstyle, I like how it sits on The Sims, and I think it's a really nice hairstyle. I really like the fringe. Then, obviously, we have Ray's hair with the little trio of buns. This is the one that is most famously seen on Ray in the brand new trilogy of the Star Wars films, so your standard. I do like it though, I think the texture is really good on it. Then we have this updo with like some plaits down the side and wrapped around the bun, kind of like this low slung back bun. Nice hairstyle. And then we also have this short version, which honestly doesn't really jump out to me as new. I feel like we've probably had hairs like this in the past with like these little wings. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't really feel new to me, but I mean, it's a nice hair and it's very versatile. This was a choice I found strange. So obviously I went through and like found the tag on everything so I didn't have to do loads of editing. And honestly, I found it strange that all of these were found under hats instead of skin details. I don't know why, but I was expecting like these horns. I'm sorry if there's more technical term for these. I was just expecting to find them under skin details, but they are actually under hats. It's the same with the masks. There are also some locked assets in this pack, which we will go back and look at the locked ones, but I want to go through the base ones and like the ones that you're gonna have access to as soon as you load up the game. So we obviously have the Kylo Ren mask, which 
Ooh, there's a bit of clipping on the neck. I mean, I'm sure you're probably not going to see that once your sim is dressed up in the Kylo robes. I mean, it's a Kylo Ren mask. There's not really a lot I can say about it because, I mean, the texture's a little bit funky to me. Like, around the eyes, I'm not going to lie. It kind of looks like Alpha CC from the look of, like, the visor. Then, like I said, we have these horns, which are specific to a certain set of Star Wars creatures. Probably will remember them from Darth Maul. He definitely had these types of little horns on his head. That's probably where a lot of you know them from. This race is actually known as a uh, Zabrak. I actually DM'd Simguru Ninja. I was like, Dave, please help me not look like a fool. And he actually gave me all the race names. Oh, it actually adds like arm texture as well. Well, I wasn't expecting that. And leg texture. Okay, now I'm even more confused as to why these were tagged as hats and not skin details because that changes like the skin. This one, which makes me super uncomfortable, I could not look at the mouth of this one for too long. It gets even worse when they start talking. I just, I'm, I know it sounds bad, but I just did not interact with these when I was over on Batu. but these are Biths. And then we also have this variant. So these are kind of acting like gloves and tights. This one right here is an Abedno. I think that's how you pronounce it. And then there's also like this version of it, which actually comes in some different color swatches. And I think this one might be a week a a week way. I'm not really sure on this one. Not 100%, but I'm fairly sure it's the same race as Hondo. And that's what he is because they got the little like chin spikes on them. I know that these are Twi'leks. <laughs> I know I've been rubbish with with everything else. So there are different color versions of the Twi'leks. And then we have some like regular hats as to what you could see people probably rocking over on Batu. I like these, um, the headscarves and like these, I can understand why they're in hats. So yeah, I think these look really good and also not just in Star Wars as well. I think they're just really nice pieces to have in the game. This one's probably a bit more Star Wars-y. So we actually didn't get any new accessories in this pack, but we did get some new makeup. So we have these sort of like face paintings and which kind of remind me of like cracks. These might be specific to a certain creature. And then we also have, again, some more skin tones and different facial markings. Moving on to the actual clothing, we have this cardigan situation over this little uh, jumper. This definitely could fit in in any world. I feel like this isn't very Star Wars-esque and you could definitely get away with just having this on a sim for everyday wear. Again, this, I feel like regular sims walking around Willow Creek, I definitely wouldn't mind them wearing this, but I like the fabrics. I love all of the layering. This definitely reminds me more of like cosplaying and Disney bounding. If you don't know what Disney bounding is, basically when you go to Disney theme parks as an adult, you can't actually wear like full costumes because one, for the safety of children, they don't want you thinking that you're an official like Disney worker, which obviously makes sense. So a lot of people Disney bound, so they take like clothing that's inspired from the parks or the character that they wanted Disney bound as, and then they can get dressed up in that way. So it's not specific to a certain character or a Disney like franchise, but just to fit in with the world. I know a lot of people do it for Batu and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So this definitely gives me like a Disney bounding vibe. I actually really like all of the clothing and it's very like, in depth. There's a lot of like earthy tones, which is 
definitely what you would expect from Star Wars. I feel like Batu is filled with like earthy tones and like camouflage, people just trying to fit in. Um, so that's what you can expect. It's very muted color palettes. Like if you're looking for something bright and colorful, I definitely don't think this is the pack for you because you're not gonna get that. You're gonna get a lot of browns, a lot of like ashes and sage greens and creams. That this is all really nice stuff though. I like the wraps as well. Again, you see a lot of like leather wraps in Star Wars, also on like lightsaber hilts and things like that. Just kind of very natural linen textures. So definitely not what I was expecting from Creator Sim. This one looks a little bit more futuristic, but I was expecting like Sims 3 into the future style with like very odd shapes and like metallic, which it's very different to that. There's like no metallicness in sight, which <laughs> I'm actually really thankful for. I will say some of it seems a bit more specific to Batu. Then onto the bottoms. Ooh, ooh, these are a choice. I don't like these ones. <laughs> I like the top half. I think I would have preferred it if they were like cuffed as like three quarter lengths and they didn't have this bottom section. I just don't really like how this bottom section fits on the sim. And also, yeah, I just would have preferred it without that, I guess. But that's me being slightly picky. I love a good cargo pants. Oh no, please don't tell me they're all gonna have these bits at the bottom. <laughs> Again, I would have really liked a variant of these without this weird funky bit. They sit quite loose at the ankles as well and I'm definitely more of a fan of like tighter clothing. Oh no. <laughs> this, the skirts and jeans combo makes a comeback. I thought we got rid of this in eco lifestyle, but no, it's back again. We have this asymmetric cut skirt with little three quarter length leggings underneath it. Oh, I mean, I get it. Like, if you think of it in the Star Wars universe, people are very active in this universe. There's a lot of walking, there's a lot of like fighting and lightsabers. And so I understand the, <laughs> the sort of usability of this item, but that's not to say I like it or enjoy the choice. I'm not a fan of the bottom of these. I have to, I have to say like, it has to be said. Mm -mm. This is not for me. Then we have wow. this skirt. Oh, this skirt's nice though. I really like this. Ooh, in that color combination. Yes. I feel like we need some more long skirts. So that's really nice. Another one, another skirts and trouser combination that we're seeing here. How does the, how do these like match up with the tops? Yeah, so there's definitely like definitely matchable items. Um, you can see that like a lot of these were made to kind of go with each other, which is kind of what I would expect. Like, yeah, definitely basically a full body outfit there but it is tops and bottoms and then we have these ones which i actually don't mind these these are quite nice i kind of wish all the others that had that funny bit at the bottom were kind of like these and just either three quarter length or didn't have a different color fabric at the bottom of them for the calves. Full body outfits, we have obviously Vi Maradi's resistant outfit. This is a full fit. It's got the boots on it as well. Also her like blasters. Um, yeah, this is cool. This is the little resistance logo. Then we have Ray's outfit and then we have more optional clothing that aren't like fully based on characters. So we have this one right here. I like how there's more natural variants and then darker tones as well. So you can kind of see the light side and the dark side even coming into play between like the normie clothes, I guess, and not just the Jedi variants. This one's ri wow. I have to say the textures are blowing me away. I think the textures look incredible on these clothes. Like, and I don't know why, but the trousers, like even though they have the bottom bit that I didn't like on the actual trousers, actually in full body outfits look a lot better. 
and I really like the way that they look. Then we have this one, which, oh, it has some like little stains on it. It's nice to see something a bit more run down in the game. Ooh, I like this. I really like this. Yes. Okay, I love that hoodie though. <gasps> That's gorgeous. And then we have this, which is a bit of a longer one. All these ones had boots on, whereas these few don't. So yeah, just more kind of roby material. Layering is a really big thing, I feel like, in the Star Wars universe. And they definitely got the layering effect and like a lot of the belts. I like this one as well. I have to say, I think this is my favorite. Like it's just different. And also like a bit androgynous as well, which I really like to see in The Sims. And it's something that I always push for more. I like this one though too. These ones, like the full body outfits, definitely more Star Wars than Willow Creek. And then we don't get any accessories, but we do actually get some boots. So these are actually just black boots. There's no color swatch on these. And then we have some shorter leather boots, which come in a range of different colors to kind of suit whatever outfit your sim has on. And then we have, again, some leather boots with some leather wraps around them. Moving on to the males, they actually get the same two hairstyles of course males don't get as many hairs ever as the feminine sims do for hats it's kind of all the same stuff something that is nice to see and definitely a positive of this pack i feel like anyway from my perspective yeah. is that there definitely doesn't seem to be as much of a jump between how much content we got for feminine sims and then how much content we actually got for masculine sims i fully just had to shut my curtains because the uh, uh, the sun was making its way in so apologies for that so we have this jacket right here again over this sort of like v collared shirt this is like reminiscent of things that we already have in the game but it's not a complete copy i just feel like we have a lot of like square cut um sort of jackets oh i love that though this is a nice this is I'm actually impressed with Create a Sim. I love all the swatches though. I feel like we've had such bright colors recently. This is really different with this little necklace on here. Yeah, I feel like we've had so many bright colors that this is actually feeling really refreshing to, uh, to sort of see. I love this with the big belt. I think this is really cool. What a cool asset. And then we have this one with sort of this little scarf buckled over it. I'll go through some of the swatches on this one. I will say I don't think the masculine tag stuff is as versatile as the feminine tag stuff. I don't know why that is. Just like instantly looking at these, I feel like your sim definitely this like this is very versatile like this just looks like someone's a star wars fan and you could see them walking around willow creek in this again the trousers have these uh the weird the a lot of these trousers are the same as we've seen on feminine sims um oh i like those though i mean i would probably use these as sleepwear but they have a belt so probably not the most comfortable as sleepwear. I just love the linen side of things. I know I keep saying it, but I feel like we've we've missed these color palettes recently and it's really nice to have some muted tones and just earthy warm stuff. These are the same as the feminine tagged ones, then so are these. Wait, what's different here? Oh, okay. Yeah, they are different. There's definitely definitely two different swatches there. What's different between these? Uh, okay, so these are the ones with these on the front and then we also have ones with one on the sides. And then for the full body, again, some of these come with shoes on. Then we obviously have the Kylo full body. This isn't my favorite. I don't know what it is. I just feel like the ribs down here just like don't feel textured enough to me. Like they don't look like armor or anything. This is a nice outfit. Ooh, I wasn't expecting that from the back. Kind of like a mesh material. I see you. 
Then we have this one, which actually, again, is nice to see a little bit of androgyny in the game. I always ask for it in The Sims 4 and like playing with lengths of things and how things work. Then we have this one right here. I definitely feel like the Kylo robes are the most disappointing asset for me so far. The mask and the robes. It's definitely an acquired taste though. I feel like, I feel like if you're not going to play in Batu, then then this creator sim you're probably not going to get a lot of use out of and then for the male shoes again we have the um boots which i'm assuming fit under yeah like the kylo outfit and then we have the same boots that we saw for the feminine also there's no new beards or facial hair just wanted to throw that out there he had a beard on but it wasn't new for the kids we actually get all the hairstyles i think or, or yeah all the hairstyles that the adults get so we're running with that theme of giving the kids exactly what they need which is more options but there's actually no new hats or accessories for the children however there is some new clothing so we have this little fabric shirt with a long undershirt underneath it this reminds me of anakin like when Anakin was a kid, definitely gives me that vibe. And again, this short sleeve one with a long sleeve underneath. And then for the bottoms, we actually get these little shorts, which are super cute. I really like those for the kids. I think they're adorable. And then these trousers. And then for... <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite assets in the whole game. So this is one of the Jawa species. <laughs> I love how they've added this for kids. Um, so these actually live on Tatooine where Anakin actually grew up. And then there are these little shoes, these little boots, which are adorable. And the toddlers actually got some stuff as well. So they got a little Ray hair variant for the toddlers. And then if we go to their full body outfits, there are three full body outfits for the toddlers too. I love this coat. I think you could definitely get away with wearing this in whatever world. Then we have this full body outfit and then we have this one with, again, the big shoulder pads and the ankle wraps. Onto the lock stuff. As you can see, all of this lock stuff is part of the full body outfit section and you unlock these by obviously playing the game pack. So you can go into the scoundrel ranking or you can go into the first order ranking then there's also resistance specialists as well. However, if you don't want to play through the pack and you just want to unlock all of these straight away, there is, of course, a cheat, the same cheat that kind of came for Nifty Knitting. So all you have to do is hit Control Shift C to bring up this little cheat text box. And then you're going to want to type in CAS dot unlock by tag and then GP09. And then if you go back on to the full body after you've unlocked them, you can see that they are actually all unlocked. So this has to do with scoundrels, I think. I think this is the scoundrel badge. I will say this kind of is meant to resemble like a little radio system, I think, but it definitely just looks like it's kind of stitched on to this outfit. Then obviously we have the Stormtrooper gear. Some of these come with swatches, some of them don't. This is a First Order Commander. Then we also have, whoa. Damn, she looks like a badass. <laughs> <gasps> Wowzers. So yeah, some of them do actually have different color swatches that you can choose from. Whereas if it seems to be like more official gear, it definitely doesn't seem to come in as many uh, color swatches. Ooh. Then we have the resistance pilot, which damn the textures. I think because this is obviously a collaboration with Star Wars and with Lucasfilm and Disney, I think like the textures are definitely a bit more out there just to resemble the actual clothing in the universe. I have to say, because I feel like we haven't had a lot of like these details in the game before. And I think they probably wanted to like show off 
the actual Star Wars assets as best ah. they could. There was also some hats. So obviously we have the Stormtrooper headgear. So if we put the Stormtrooper on, oh, I love the yellow one. Then we have the First Order Captain's hat. We have, ooh, this is different. <laughs> A cap with big ears on it. So these are all very, very much Star Wars universe. Although I love this one. Again, you've got all the Stormtrooper, the First Order. So kind of exactly the same sort of outfits, just definitely built for the masculine frame as well as the feminine frame. This one is not different. I thought it was, but it's not. Okay, so they're the unlocked variants of that. Let's see how the Kylo mask actually fits with this though. Because like I said, I did notice a bit of clipping originally. But yeah, it is completely hidden by his hood, even if his hood is down. So there we have it. That is everything that comes in Journey to Batu the game pack. Definitely let me know what you think down below. I do think the strong points of this pack are definitely the color tones. I just think they're very different to what we've had in The Sims 4, especially recently. I feel like we've had a lot of bright standout colors and it's nice just to see more muted, warm, earthy tones. I'm definitely a fan of that. I will say it's not as versatile as I probably would hope as a Sims player. I definitely feel like there's more of a Batu influence, which is it was going to be, obviously, like, this is Journey to Batu after all. If they weren't Star Wars themed, it wasn't going to fit in with the pack. There are some items that did surprise me, and I think I could use outside of Batu and outside of the story. However, very heavily focused on the Star Wars universe. So definitely let me know how you feel. And once again, big thank you to EA for giving me early access to this pack. I super duper appreciate it and I feel very privileged to be able to bring this content to you so thank you to the EA Game Changers program let me know how you all feel about Create a Sim down below and I will speak to you all in my next video bye guys mm -hmm.